The Bay led the Bombers to their first world championship in 1923. Great play! A no-hitter! Perfect game for Don Larson! Hayes catches it! It's third! Home run of the game! Hayes makes the catch! The Yankees win! The Yankees are back on top! World champions for the 27th time! The Yankees were, for the first two decades of the American League, the uh, weak sister. The Yankees played in a rickety ballpark, Hilltop Park, whose lease expired after 10 years. And they had to share a ballpark with their hated rivals, the Giants, at the Polo Grounds. The Yankees were not known as the Bronx Bombers because they didn't play in the Bronx. That did not occur until 1923. The 1923 season was really a year of rebirth, redemption, and even revenge for the New York Yankees. Not only did iconic Yankee Stadium open, but Jacob Rupert bought out his partner for sole ownership of the Yankees. Lou Gehrig was signed off the Columbia University campus and made his big league debut. For the third consecutive year, the Yankees played the New York Giants for the championship. Previous two years, 1922 and 1921, all the games in the World Series were played at the Polo Grounds because that's where the Yankees played as tenants of the Giants. And had been beaten badly, and it irked them uh, in part because this was, these were not Subway Series. The Giants and the Yankees shared a uh, home ground at this point. The 1923 World Series was distinguished by being the first true Subway Series. And for that year's World Series, games alternated between the two ballparks. Games 1, 3, and 5 were played at Yankee Stadium. Games two, four, and six were played across the Harlem River at the Polo Grounds, home of the New York Giants. The soon-to-be-dubbed Bronx Bombers were coming off their third straight American League pennant, boasting the best record in baseball and the game's top player in Babe Ruth. The Babe led Major League Baseball in runs scored, homers, RBI, on-base percentage, and slugging. In addition, the 1923 Yankees possessed three other everyday players with a batting average higher than 300 while five pitchers logged over 238 innings apiece. Across the Harlem River, the two-time defending world champion New York Giants had reclaimed the polo grounds for themselves, but the house that Ruth built towered over their yard. And on October 10, 1923, the architecturally sound sports cathedral housed its first World Series game, where it saw the first postseason home run in the stadium's history. But surprisingly, the home run was not hit by Babe Ruth. It was actually hit by Giants outfielder Casey Stengel, who 25 years later became a Hall of Fame manager for the New York Yankees. And he rounded the bases for an inside-the-park home run. However, around second base, his shoe began to loosen. By the time he got to third, there was no shoe. And so he actually scored uh, sliding in sock first. Wait Hoyt started game one for the Yankees and didn't last long pitching two and a third innings while giving up four runs on four hits. Joe Bush relieved Hoyt and pitched well until Casey Stengel's game-winning inside the park home run in the ninth inning. Game two saw Babe Ruth return to the Polo Grounds, a park that he had really enjoyed hitting in, and he responded by hitting two home runs in the Yankees' victory to even the series at one game apiece. In addition to Babe Ruth's two solo homers, Herb Pennock also helped guide the Yankees to victory. Pennock, the 1923 American League leader in winning percentage, pitched all nine innings in Game 2, surrendering just two runs and helping the Yankees knot the series at one game apiece. When the series returned to Yankee Stadium for Game 3, it was a scoreless affair until Casey Stengel hit his second home run of the World Series, the only run that was scored in a one nothing Giants triumph. It was the first one nothing game in World Series history in which the only run scored was on a home run. Newspapers the next day had a great time reporting that the record of the series was Stengel 2, Yankees 1. Casey Stengel was indeed the Game 3 hero, but it came down to a pitching duel between Art Neff and Sam Jones. The Giants starter won the battle, pitching a six-hit shutout and put the Yankees in a two-games-to-one hole. But the Yankees came back in 1923 series. After losing two of the first three games, their power took over. The Yankees won game four as they scored six runs in the second inning and pulled ahead from the New York Giants. And that's all the Yankees would need in an 8-4 to four victory over their Gotham City rivals. Bob Shockey, who was on the tail end of a 15-year career, got the win after allowing three runs over seven and two-thirds innings. Herb Pennock also played a part in the W by notching his first career postseason save. In Game 5, the Yankees put on a show for close to 63,000 Yankee Stadium fans. They exploded out of the gate once again, scoring seven runs over the first two innings. 
Joe Dugan and Bob Musil would combine for six RBI as Joe Bush would pitch a one-run, three-hit complete game victory for the Bombers. Going to the climactic game, Game 6 at the Polo Grounds, Babe Ruth hit a solo home run in the first inning. But the Yankees fell behind 4-1 to one until the eighth inning when a five-run rally led the Yankees to a 6-4 to four win in their first ever World Series championship. Babe Ruth, Bob Musil, and Herb Pennock helped guide the Yankees to a Game 6 victory. Finally, the Yankees had beaten the Giants for their first world championship, and it came in their new stadium, which featured crowds in excess of 62,000 and over $1 million in ticket sales, a record at the time. Ten home runs were hit in the 1923 World Series, five by the New York Yankees and five by the New York Giants, and three of those ten home runs were actually inside the park home runs. The Babe had a, a big series in his first series at the ballpark that had his name, the house that Ruth built. He had 368 with three home runs. Following their game six triumph at the Polo Grounds, the Yankees were celebrating in the visitors' clubhouse when Babe Ruth jumped up on the trainer's room table and made a short speech congratulating manager Miller Huggins and presented Huggins with a diamond ring. So in some ways, this unofficial gift might be considered the very first Yankees World Series ring that was given out, although the players did receive gold watches as tokens of their achievement the following spring. So to win the championship in their first year in their new stadium, was a great success, a, a great affirmation of the Yankees' separation from the pack.